Okay, so if you want to be successful in mathematics, you absolutely must know how to do a problem like this without the aid of a calculator. Let's go to take a look at the problem. We have eight to the two thirds power times nine to the one half power. What is this equal to? Well, if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm gonna walk through exactly how to solve this problem without a calculator. Matter of fact, uh, the solution or the steps here are not that difficult, but a lot of you won't know the answer, but that's okay. If you stick with me for a couple minutes, you'll be an expert at this stuff, I assure you. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so eight to the two thirds power times nine to the one half power. What could the answer be? Well, the correct answer is 12. All right, so not too uh, you know big or crazy of an answer. Now, actually, uh, some of you might be surprised, like, wow, that whole thing is equal to 12. Indeed, it is. Now, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of rational exponents. And uh, this is a, uh, one part of what we're going to be looking at. Okay. Now, more uh, when you have powers, okay, now here we have eight to the two thirds power. This part of the power is called the base. Matter of fact, let me just do this real quick right here. Like two to the third power. Two is the base, three is the exponent. The entire thing is a power. Now, notice I said these are what we call rational exponents. Okay, so the exponents are rational. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to explain all of this right now. Okay, so again, we're dealing with rational exponents, but we need to know a few things here. Uh, first of all, we need to know what this word rational means. Okay, so I'm saying rational uh, exponents, and I'm referring to these things. So in mathematics, typically, now I'm going to uh, oversimplify here, when you hear things like rational numbers or rational expressions, basically you're thinking fractions, okay? So two thirds, for example, is a rational number in mathematics. Numbers that can be expressed as fractions where the numerator and denominator are integers, okay, are called rational. Okay, so here, again, we have fractions as the exponents. So uh, we're dealing with rational exponents. Uh, now, what are the things that we need to know uh, to do this problem? Well, there are properties of powers and exponents. We don't need to know all of them for this particular problem, but this is stuff that you definitely want to know. So for example, I'll just write this out algebraically here, a to the m uh, times a to the n. We are trying to multiply, right, some uh, powers here. So when you have one power times another power, well, you can add the exponents if and only if the bases are the same, okay? So for example, if I have two cubed times two to the fifth, well, if I'm multiplying these two powers, the answer is two to the eighth, okay? In other words, you're adding the exponents, but I can only do that because here, the bases are the same, two, in other words, two is a base here and two is a base here, but we don't have the same bases here. So one is, uh, one base is eight, one base is nine. So what do we do? Well, we're going to have to know something about rational exponents, but you're going to need to know a lot about powers and uh, exponents in mathematics, especially algebra. I'm not going to be able to cover everything, uh, you know, um, you know, that you need to know, but we're going to stick with what you need to know for this particular problem. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about square roots and radicals. This expression right here in algebra or in mathematics is called a radical. Now, a lot of you will say, well, that's a square root symbol. Indeed, it is a square root symbol, but it's also a radical, okay? So let's talk about the relationship between radicals and rational exponents, okay? All right, so here, the square root of four is equal to four to the one half power. Now, let's take a look at another example, then I'll come back to the square root. The cube root of four is equal to four to the one third power, okay? Now, if you're seeing some sort of pattern here, 
you might be saying, well, this one is one half. I could see this little three. It seems uh, this little number right here appears to be the denominator with one as the numerator. You would be correct. Now, when you're taking the square root of number, there's actually a little two right here that we don't write, but that two is right uh, is uh, the denominator of a rational exponent. Let me give you another example. If I was taking, let's say, uh, the seventh root of um, five, how do you think we would write that? Well, if you're saying, well, would that would be five to the one uh, seventh, indeed it is. Okay, so this is how we um, write uh, radicals, okay, or square root expressions using rational exponents. All right, so you can kind of go from a rational exponent back into a radical. So in other words, if you saw something like nine to the one half power, you know, let's kind of go up here real quick. This should mean something to you now. You're like, oh, nine to the one half power. What do you think this is equal to? Well, if you think it's equal to the square root of nine, well, then you are definitely paying attention. Okay, so this is the first thing that we need to know, but uh, let's go ahead and take this step. So we know now that nine to the one half power, it's pretty easy, uh, that is going to be the square root of nine, or at least identifying this part with rational exponents and square roots and radicals. Now, the more interesting part of the problem is this part, eight to the two thirds. What do we do there? Well, of course, I'm going to explain that in just one second. But first, I'm gonna ask you to consider subscribing to my channel. This is a great way for you to show, uh, show support on the uh, basically the work that I do. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. At the time of this video, I have over 2,000 uh, plus math videos from basic math to advanced math, uh, like calculus and everything in between. I do this because I'm obsessed with teaching mathematics. There is a great need for people uh, to uh, really get great instruction. Now, there is a ton of great math teachers out there, but unfortunately, there is a teacher shortage and a lot of people are just not getting the instruction, the math instruction they need. And what ends up happening is they get frustrated. They're like, I'm bad at math. And then they give up on math. This is my uh, basically my greatest passion is to help those people not quit. And actually, uh, those people, or it, it could be you, you might be saying, well, I'm that person. If you're frustrated with math, you can actually uh, end up loving math and being great at math. That's certainly possible, okay? But you need to get great instruction and you gotta be able to uh, you know, be willing to put in the work as well. But anyways, by you subscribing, it really does push out my content on YouTube to connect with those people that need my help. So, uh, you know, please consider subscribing. And if you're gonna do that, make sure to hit that notification bell as well uh, so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's get back to this problem here. So we have eight to the two thirds times the square root of nine. And now we know uh, where that was nine to the one half, but that's equivalent to the square root of nine. So the square root of nine is three. All right, so that's pretty easy. So here is three. Now, if the answer is 12, right? The answer is 12 because I showed you the answer. Then this right here has to be equal to four. So how do we get a four out of eight and two thirds? Well, let's go to take a look exactly how to do that. All right, so here we have eight, um, to the two thirds power. We need to do a little bit of a trick here, okay, with this two thirds. And this uh, it requires another property of powers and exponents. Uh, let me draw your attention over here. Now, I will show you the property. It's a to the m to the n power is equal to a to the m uh, times n. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you have a power to a certain uh, exponent here, like two to the third power, and you take this power to another power, so in other words, like two uh, cubed squared, this entire thing is gonna be equal to two to the six. What we do is we take this outside exponent and we just multiply it by the inside exponent. So of course we have two to the six. All right, now uh, knowing that, we could kind of use a little bit of a trick to factor out this two up here. So we get a one. Because if I have one third, you're like, oh, that's the cube root, right? But what I, you, you may not understand what two, uh, two thirds is. Well, what we can do is write this this way, eight to the one third power squared. Now, the reason why I'm gonna write it this way because two times one third is what? Well, two times one third, all of you should be experts in fractions, is two thirds. So uh, eight to the one third power, all this squared is the same thing as eight to the two thirds power. But I'm gonna write it this way because I can kind of like start thinking to myself, all right, uh, I can maybe consider writing this as a radical. So let's go and do that right now. 
Okay, so eight to the one third power, what does that mean? It means the cube root of eight, okay? This is, uh, this rational expression is equivalent to the radical expression, the cube root of eight. Now, what does a cube root of eight mean? It means, um, or means, excuse me, it means what number times itself is equal to eight, okay? That's what the cube root is equal to, and hopefully you're like, wait a minute, I know, uh, a number times itself uh, three times, right, uh, is two. And that's going to be equal to 8. So that was a really bad uh, way of, of saying that. Let me say this a little bit uh, better, right? The cube root of a number, right? The cube root of 8 is what number times itself three times is 8. Now, of course, that number is 2, okay? So now we know that the cube root of 8 is 2, and all we have to do is square that, okay? So this right here is equal to 2. So 2 squared is 2 times 2 or, or, or 4, Okay, so now finally we have eight to the two thirds power. We know that now that that's equal to four. We already know that nine to the one half power is the same thing as the square root of nine, which of course is equal to three. So this is nothing more than four times three, which of course is 12. All right, so this is absolutely must know uh, knowledge for those of you that are studying any kind of math that uh, involves uh, pretty, this is per, mostly taught like at the algebra, maybe pre-algebra level, but it's not that difficult. Now, a couple of quick suggestions for those of you that need help in algebra, okay, or, uh, you know, um, maybe algebra two, pre-algebra, right now, uh, for the next few days, now the expiration on this special offer ends November 10th, 2023. Okay, I had to think about that for a second. But anyways, my main courses are 50% off, all right? This is like a once in a blue moon sale. So if you're interested in enrolling in one of my primary full curriculum courses, this is like my best instruction. Uh, you'll find the information, the links, the discount code, uh, discount code for that sale in the description below. Now, some of you might be just interested and just maybe wanting to build up your math skills and maybe you're not ready to kind of enroll in a full dedicate a one course in algebra or one course in geometry. So I have a great course as well. It's a brand new course. It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. And now that's course is, that this particular course is not on sale, but it's a really affordable course. And I teach you a ton of basic math, algebra, geometry, some probability. It's kind of a hodgepodge, a self-paced course for some of you out there that might be interested in just wanting to kind of brush up on forgotten math skills. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.